have a student in my class who was disengaged from the start. He always sat in the back row, made little or no eye contact, and most disconcertingly, had spotty attendance. His midterm exam was very disappointing. When he did not show up for the final, I had pretty much decided that if he didn't care enough to show up, then why should I be concerned about his performance? I got myself positioned to post a non-passing grade. Later that afternoon, he showed up at my office door and walked himself in, in my mind, defying office courtesy. I was ready to tell him in detail how his lack of engagement had earned him a non-passing grade. That's when he looked up at me, made eye contact for the first time, and said, my cancer has come back. Everything changed in that moment. What I perceived as an irresponsible man was a man in a fight for his life. He wanted to work out a plan to take the final so that he could march across the graduation stage, something that I immediately agreed to help him accomplish. Looking back on that day, I realized that my people skills were lacking. I have a thought exercise for you. Right now, I want you to think about the best boss, leader, or mentor you've ever had, past or present, okay? Do you have that person in mind? Good. What key quality did this leader possess that was so important for you? I've asked this question in many of my executive courses, and no one has ever said, my best boss was really intelligent, or my boss had a perfect GMAT score. Instead, they mention people skills. Leaders are judged not just by how smart they are, but how they handle themselves and others. The skill that involves how to work with other people and how to manage yourself is known as emotional intelligence. There are four skills of emotional intelligence, self-awareness, other awareness, also known as empathy, self-management, and relationship management. Self-awareness is all about understanding ourselves and seeing ourselves as others see us. People who are high in self-awareness recognize the emotions they experience, the factors that lead to these emotions, and how they are perceived by others. Some of you might have heard or experienced firsthand a 360 degree evaluation. A 360 degree evaluation is a modern day form of organizational torture. Actually, a 360 evaluation is a method of providing feedback to a person from all points of view. For example, we might ask subordinates to evaluate their manager. We might also ask the senior vice president to evaluate the same manager. Then we might see what the customers and clients think. Many people are often surprised to read their 360s. However, I often ask managers, well, how could nine people be wrong? Self-management focuses on how to appropriately regulate our emotions, particularly negative ones. I'm sure that you can think of an occasion where somebody has lost their temper. According to emotional intelligence guru, Daniel Goldman of Harvard, People often have amygdala hijacks, which are essentially adult temper tantrums. An amygdala hijack occurs when people exhibit an emotional response that is immediate, overwhelming, and out of measure with the actual stimulus. Did you know that an entire industry has grown up just to help medical doctors deal with temper tantrums in the operating room? Cursing and throwing scalpels is apparently just one of the miter infractions. Self-management or self-regulation of negative emotions is a key leadership skill, perhaps even a key survival skill in the age of the ever-present video camera and cell phone. The most well-known study demonstrating the importance of self-management skills is the famous marshmallow study conducted by Walter Mischel. In this study, young children were offered a marshmallow and were told that if they could wait 15 minutes, they would receive two marshmallows. Most children found this to be a really difficult task and about two thirds of them ate the marshmallow before the 15 minute mark. However, some of them were able to hold out and they used a variety of sophisticated techniques such as asking for coloring books or other items. 
In my own work with business people and leaders in highly stressful jobs, I have found that successful leaders have self-implemented their own way to deal with frustration, anger, etc., before it becomes an ill-fated career-defining move. For example, one senior leader at a national laboratory takes his dog on a walk before responding to emails that are upsetting. Another senior leader at a major company meditates for 30 minutes every day. Yet another leader engages in cognitive reappraisal. She identifies the situation she is facing that is most disconcerting or upsetting. For example, instead of looking at an upcoming job interview as a test of her ability, she redefines it as a chance to network. What are the implications for leadership? First, emotional intelligence starts with self-awareness. Second, people who are high in self-awareness are more empathic. Finally, you can improve your ability to self-regulate with rehearsal and practice.